Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. Apologies if you can hear the wind howling outside. It is a sunny but very windy day. Um, I believe there's a really bad storm blowing over Europe and we're kind of catching the edge of it over here in the UK. Um, today I have a bit of a mishmash kind of video, I guess is probably the best way to describe it. There are a few things I wanted to do and rather than doing three separate videos I thought I would just do it all in one video I might end up actually splitting this video into two if it ends up being super long um, I might also end up speeding a lot of this up and doing it more like a time lapse and then doing a voiceover we'll see how it goes um, but the three things I wanted to talk about today and cover one is I wanted to update my granulating watercolor palette I received I say received I purchased over the last few months some um, additional granulating watercolors which have already panned up and I just want to replace some of the ones that I don't use as much or are not as granulating uh, from my granulating palette and replace with those pans and then um, I need to do a new swatch sheet for it as well so this is my existing swatch sheet for my granulating palette then I want to revisit my gouache palette now if you remember I set this up last year towards the end of last year before i found out i was pregnant before i got really ill from being pregnant and um and i haven't touched it since because i got ill and i didn't do anything and as you can see it's all very dried out a lot of them have crumbled up which gouache tends to do and this is why a lot of people don't feel like gouache is very well suited to being in a palette like this now what i want to do is i want to experiment and see if these paints can be reconstituted to a point where they are usable and not like inconvenient to use it might be a fail we will see um that's kind of the point of the experiment sorry it's the wind um and yeah so we'll see how this goes i have sort of done a little trial with a, a couple of the paints i think it was these two i tried it with and it seemed to have worked so we're going to try it again and we will see how well this works if we can reconstitute this um, dried out crumbled up gouache uh, some of these paints like these three here this one this one and this one are actually um, watercolors they're not gouache so um, those look fine but the others we're gonna see what we can do about it and then finally if you recall from my most recent art haul where I got this tube of white Rembrandt opaque white Rembrandt watercolour. I was talking about wanting to create some other pastel colours with some of the paints I already have and so that's why I've got some pans out to do some DIY mixes and we're going to see if we can recreate some of the well-known uh, pastel colours. I've sort of done some research and written down pigment numbers and stuff so we can play around with that a little bit and, and yeah so we'll see where we get to. I do have my gouache paints here in case I need to top up anything in the palette as we're going and, um, and yeah and I have my original swatch sheet so this is oops, this is the original swatch sheet I did of my gouache palette so um, I believe the left column was of each row was um, painted with fresh gouache and then the right column was painted with the gouache once it had, for the most part, dried out. Not bef not when it was at this crumbly stage, but when it had basically set. Um, and then now what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to try to reactivate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a pipette of water and, water and pop a bunch of water on each of the pans to try. And then I'm going to set it aside whilst I do some other bits. And then we're going to come back and see how these do. So... So yeah, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to do most of this with voiceover, I think, going forward, just because otherwise this video is going to be super, super long, and I don't want it to get boring. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you find this informative and somewhat sort of chatty video. Um, and yeah, so let's see how this goes. Okay, so I'm actually filming this voiceover several weeks after I filmed this footage, so let's hope I can remember everything. <laughs> First up, we're starting with the gouache palette. So I've just taken a pipette and some clean water, and I am just um, 
squeezing some water into each pan and then I let it sit for a while and I've come in with this little pokey thing and trying to mix up the gouache and see how it's reconstituted and I did this a few times I think I only show it the one time on the video because otherwise it gets very repetitive um, most of the gouache did reconstitute to a certain degree um, if you see me skipping any pans those are watercolor so I didn't bother doing those ones um, but the, the two that I had issues with and you'll see it later as well were the Alizarin Crimson and Prussian Blue from Windsor & Newton. Neither of those reconstituted in any way at all and you'll see that later. Um, okay so now we're moving on to the granulating palette. So you can see here I'm going to be replacing the Aurelian by Holbein with the Schmincke Volcano Yellow. You can see the ones I've marked on there with the little dot are the ones I'm going to be replacing. So that's my Schmincke Volcano Yellow. And then I'm replacing I think that was a Paul Rubens colour and uh, anyway so I'm just taking some of the pads out. So the pads that are going in I'm it's going to be Volcano Red um, by Schmincke, then Lucas's Verona Green Earth, and uh, I've got to try, I think there was Mars Brown by Schmincke as well, and Viridian Green by M. Graham. So all in all, there were five colours I added and five colours I removed, and now I can't remember off the top of my head which five I removed. So, oh, actually, I can see on the, I can see on the um, chart there. So two of the colours I removed, one was cobalt green by Lucas. I prefer the Verona green earth. I prefer the hue and the granulation of it. And I also removed um, the burnt umber by Rembrandt because it's not as granulating as some of the others. And as you saw there, I managed to dip my finger into <laughs> the Viridian by M. Graham. So I'm just rearranging some of the colors and sort of giving, getting everything lined up in a way that makes sense. So I think here I'm just swatching a little bit to see what order I want the colours in. So that's the Mars Brown by Schmincke. And <laughs> some of these pans are stuck together. Just cleaning that off. <laughs> so I was just trying to figure out how to rearrange the colours based on the swatches and all of that. I'm just making a big mess, keep smearing everything onto that Viridian Green. Um, <laughs> So yeah, and there we go, and I think the Volcano Red's going to be going in there. Okay, so that's the new that's the new swatch for that, so I'm just sort of swatching out the colours I've added, just to, well at least this is the Viridian by M. Graham, and then the Schmincke Volcano Red, just to see if they neutralise or how they work together. And that's Aussie Red Gold by Daniel Smith with the Viridian makes a really nice sort of bright green. At this point I was just sort of playing around. <laughs> and so those are the pans I took out. They will go into my overflow pan palette, I guess. I have an extra palette that I keep to one side with a bunch of leftover pans that I've removed from other palettes and sort of rejigging things around. Okay, so now we're moving on to creating our pastel palette. So I have a bunch of pastel paints from Shinhan. I have a Van Gogh Lavender and I have a Holbein Davies Grey. Other than that, um, I don't have any other pastel colours. So I went through the Jackson's website and I looked through Holbein, Mission Gold and Shinhan's um, colours because they're the ones that mostly seem to have these pastel shades of uh, watercolours. And I wrote down their pigment mixes and pigment combinations and stuff like that. And then I sort of went through my stash of tubes and pulled out different pans, uh, different paints um, that match those pigments. And I'm essentially just mixing them with white. I had got the opaque white from uh, Rembrandt. Sorry, I'm forgetting my words here. And I'm just sort of custom making some of my own mixes based on the mixes in the... Um, in the other paints and now I don't know exactly the ratios of white of the white pigment to the other pigments in these paints I'm just sort of taking a stab at it essentially and some of them are just mixes that I decided I wanted to try myself not necessarily because they are a pre-existing sort of pastel so I think I did one with a Payne's Grey I did one with Indigo 
I did a sap green and I did green gold from Daniel Smith as well mixed with white just to get various shades of um, pastel tones I did pyro rubine with um, by uh, Holbein that's uh, one of my favorite shades of like red that I really enjoy um, I think that one was sap green I can't remember now uh, no, yeah it's sap green by uh, Shin Han and that's the green gold by Daniel Smith and then I think that's I think that one was indigo yeah indigo and then that grey one there was the Payne's grey and so the, every time I sort of mixed it up with that little pokey stick I then just sort of rubbed it onto the paper so here you can see a little sampling of the custom mixed pastel shades that I have created um, of oh, that one that I'm doing now that one was a mix of bright rose and white so it's a really vibrant sort of pastel um, the one next to the bright rose one the blue I think that's kind of like a custom mix of Vedita blues it's cobalt blue and white I really like how that green gold one turned out and the indigo is really beautiful as well um, so even though the indigo has the opacity from the white it's still quite a dark color and you can see the corresponding plain mix uh, plain colors like before the white was added on the previous page there's a few other colors towards the bottom there but it gives you a better idea of how that looks um, how those colors look with and without the white if that makes sense okay so I realized I um, Oh no, I'm just now I'm just filling pans with the pre-mixed like the convenience tubes of pastel shades that I already had in my like stash of paints. So I'm just filling those up. I was almost out of the lavender, so got my tube bringer out. And yeah, it's a really fun I, I really enjoyed putting this palette together. It was a lot of fun. Um I definitely used up all of my remaining white here I, I realized some of the um, pans are a bit a bit low so I wanted to sort of top them up a little bit this little pokey thing that I'm using is actually a clay tool it's really great for mixing paint because you don't have to like waste a lot of toothpicks and here's the finished palette put everything in there and I put in a large full pan of just uh, white gouache to um, do additional mixing if I want to tone the colors anymore like make them more pastel or add more white to anything then that option is there as well all right so now <laughs> the light is quickly fading or rather I'm getting all the afternoon light coming through my window now it's been several hours since I started filming this video by this point and I have mixed and added water and reconstituted this gouache palette several times I'm now swatching it out onto cotton paper. It's, um, and from my experience doing this, I noticed that a lot of the paints, even though they reconstituted nicely, that, that was the Elizabeth Crimson, it has not reconstituted nicely at all. Um, they felt a bit grainy, and I think I'll talk about this a bit more um, towards the end. They, they kind of had a bit of a grainy texture, but as you can see, I'm going straight from the pan to the paper, and that's the Prussian blue. You can see they're the third blue on that top page um, does not look good um, but yeah so w with that I found and like I said I think I talk about this later but I found that if you take the paint mix it on the palette and then put it onto the paper it comes out a lot smoother than um, so you see you see here like I okay so this is where I did it I did, did a little trial with a few other a few of the paints just mixing it just a little bit on the palette before taking the paint to paper to see if that would work at all and I was trying it with the Elizabeth Crimson it just did not work at all um, but it definitely worked for the other paints that were otherwise a bit grainy if you just mix it a bit on the palette first and then into onto the paper it works just fine um, as it turns out I'm actually perfectly fine with sort of re-wetting my gouache from dry when I'm using it at least with this palette and if I want fresh gouache I'll just use gouache straight out of the tube so here you can see a bit of a close-up so those two on that top row that aren't opaque aren't as opaque as the rest are actually watercolors the rest on this page are gouache and then I think there's some 
you see that alizarin crimson did not turn out and you can see that grainy sort of texture that i was talking about that tends to go away like i said if you pre-mix it on the palette a little bit so you can see there that red and the pink next to it how it looked after i mixed it on the palette versus going straight from the pan to the paper and there that prussian blue did not come together at all um i think that and the alizarin crimson will have to be used fresh that yellow ochre the one that's on the in the sketchbook i still had some green on my paintbrush so it's a bit um tainted um, and those last three colors there are actually watercolors not gouache which is why they're more transparent so it's actually the next day it's been about 24 hours since i first started trying to reconstitute this gouache palette and most of the paints have as you'll have probably seen in earlier footage um, has reconstituted fine. Some of them look a little bit grainy, which, let me just zoom you in a little bit so you can see better. Um, some of them look a little bit grainy on here. I'm just trying to find my sketchbook where I was swatching these out yesterday. Where did I put it? Um, oh, there we go. And some of them look a bit grainy on the paper here as well. But I, um, when you mix it up on the actual pa on a palette before you put it before you put it on paper, um, focus. It does actually then paint on quite smooth. Okay, so this is the same. Ah, let me get them side by side. So you see how it looks a bit grainy there, but once, if I pick up the paint and put it on a palette first, mix it up a bit, then it smooths out and it paints on a lot smoother. It's the same reconstituted yellow paint from here. So whilst they might be, some of them are a bit grainier, others are a lot smoother, like this cobalt turquoise has basically turned back into regular liquid gouache. Um, yeah, I think most of the colors have reconstituted pretty well. I'd say most of the palette is uh, still usable as gouache. The only two colors that I will say are not savable, and even after 24 hours, they still are the same, is the Windsor & Newton Elysian Crimson. It's just super grainy and the paint just hasn't reconstituted. And the Prussian Blue as well is just super granny. It's just not nice texture at all. The, the, the granules of paint are like still rock hard and they're not reconstituting um so yeah i think those two are not savable not salvageable but having said that two out of you know 32 paints isn't too bad and in fairness one two three four five and six of these are actually watercolors so they don't have any issues reconstituting either they're just they just re-wet like watercolors so you got what was that for six that were watercolors and two that didn't work out um so that's eight out of 32 so it's not too bad the rest are the rest are great they are workable what i'm going to do now is i'm actually going to swatch them out in my um hannah Muller cappuccino watercolor sketchbook and i got this which i showed it in a haul a while ago now where i was um I got it specifically for gouache, so I'm going to swatch out my gouache palette into this book so I have a record of what the colours look like and um, and yeah, and then I think I'm going to call this video done. Like I said, it's probably going to be two videos at this rate just because of how long it took me to film all the different bits and pieces. So I'm just going to quickly show you the other palettes. So this was the pastel palette I put together. And I really love how this one has turned out. I also added a full pan of white just so I can uh, lighten any other colours any further if I would like to. And uh, that's actually white gouache because I ran out of the white watercolour in the end. Um, let's pop some of these bubbles. Um, and yeah, so I need to make a swatch card for this. Uh, I need to make a swatch card for this actually. I haven't made a swatch card for it but might just use the sketchbook for that and I need to make an updated swatch card for my granulating palette because um, that's now finished and updated as well as you'll have seen. What I'm planning to do is a separate video showing some really fun colour mixes with the granulating palette so that'll be coming and um, once I've played around with this a little bit I'll definitely share my thoughts on 
this little pastel palette but I really love how this turned out and I'm also happy that I was able to put this together using the colors I already had without you know with only having bought a tube of white watercolor to mix up a bunch of these colors and not having to purchase I don't know nine ten different tubes of paint um just to fill up these half pans because whilst I am currently in the mood to play around with pastel watercolors I don't know realistically going forward how much I'm really going to be using pastel watercolors in my work overall so having the option to just mix up a few versions of that is is great okay so I think I'm gonna leave it there I think I'll call this video done if you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed all of this uh I hope chit chat because I hope I'll have done a voiceover for most of this um these two videos if you've enjoyed it then um please hit this uh the like button give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it if you'd like to see more videos and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already I think I just repeated myself there sorry baby brain is real right now I'm about 28 weeks pregnant at the time of recording this and my brain is mush so <laughs> excuse me um for that let me know your experiences with any of these types of palettes have you set up a pastel watercolor palette do you pan up your gouache or do you use it fresh i'm interested to hear your thoughts and i will see you guys in the next one all right take care bye for now